Hey guys, this is Nathan Firth. So first off, I just wanted to say thank you to anyone that attended any one of the sessions we did at Knowledge18, and it was so good to meet many of you. Uh, in this video, I just really want to really quickly just wanted to go over the demo portal that we showed during some of our talks. Uh, so the first talk that we did was during CreatorCon uh, Developer Theater, and we talked about gamification for Service Portal. So in this one, we showed uh, some examples of how you could implement gamification and use it for driving user adoption. Um, one of the examples that we covered was uh, using a guided tour to walk the user through the portal and then rewarding them for some points for doing that. So I wanted to show that here real quick. So we can present the user with some different steps here. And then when they are complete, you'll see down here in the bottom left that we've been rewarded with 300 points for doing so. Now with this application that we wrote, uh, this is a scoped application and uh, it is also built using a script include that can be called from anywhere in the platform. So it's not just limited to uh, doing a guided tour. We also did an example uh, where it, we integrated with social Q&A. So if someone had submitted a question and it, you submitted an answer and that was marked as correct, you could also be awarded points that way. And we put a, a quick little button here uh, to kind of demonstrate how to do this also uh, from triggering an event. So this has already been released on serviceportal.io. So feel free to check out that code. And if you have any questions, you know, definitely reach out and let us know. Uh, the second talk that we did was on unlocking service portal widgets. So I wanted to go through these here real quick. So uh, in this first one, we talked about good coding practices. And this was primarily around not manipulating the DOM directly and using data bindings and events to communicate between widgets. So if you take a look at this example, we are also releasing this code, but real quickly, this green button here is actually triggering an Angular event. This is one widget, this is a second widget up here. And when we trigger this event, we get the animation. Here's another version of this that does the exact same behavior, but it is in fact using DOM manipulation and grabbing uh, the element through jQuery and directly manipulating it. One of the reasons why this is a bad practice is because you have no separation of concerns and this widget is directly manipulating this widget. Um, in the second one, we talked about uh, creating maintainable widgets. And with this one, uh, we talked about using an Angular directive uh, using uh, assigning instance options to your widgets to make them more configurable. Also using uh, CSS variables uh, so that you can uh, very quickly be able to change the look and feel uh, depending on where the widget is being used. Uh, also being able to bring in ng templates uh, so that you can uh, have different looks and feels that you can uh, simply choose from. So uh, for example here with this widget we have a template picker here, so I can drop down to debug, hit save, and this is just rendering the exact same widget, but just pulling from a different template, which in this case I have displaying JSON. And then all of that logic that is actually responsible for producing this data is actually coming from a script include. So just some different examples of how you can create more maintainable widgets. Uh, then we talked about uh, creating uh, asynchronous widgets. Now the primary reason for having a synchronous widget is if it's going to be loading lots of data and it could potentially take a long time to load. Normally, if it's not asynchronous, it's going to delay the loading of the page. But when you mark it as asynchronous, you, you are able to load the widget and fetch the data after the initial page load. Uh, we, in our example, we also cover an example on how to uh, do that using a REST API. And then the last one is using uh, streamlined queries. So there's many different ways of writing queries and fetching data. So in this first example, we're going through the knowledge base and we are grabbing all of the categories and building out the entire tree using a recursive function. Um, what this ultimately is doing is kicking off a se separate glide record to fetch every level. And you'll notice here, it kicked off 31 separate queries at uh, execution time of 47 milliseconds. Now this may not seem like much, but now imagine this with thousands of users and you know potentially this could be a problem. Um, now 
here we're doing the exact same thing except we're fetching all of the data at once using a single glide record query and then we're sorting through and building out the array in JavaScript. Now you'll notice this is only four milliseconds. So much faster and the, the real point here is just be very aware of the number of glide record queries that is happening behind the scenes uh, when you are writing um, your server script. And finally, the last session that we did at Knowledge was building a better service portal, uh, lessons learned from the field. Now, during that session, we covered quite a few topics, but the one I wanted to quickly highlight was how uh, one some different ways that you could lay out your service catalog. So in this example, uh, we broke it down by order hardware, software, you know, kind of typical categories, but by displaying some of the subcategories to so some of the items within those categories, we're able to provide a little bit more context. Um, so wanted to show this, this is fully responsive, also uh, as gestures enabled so you can swipe left and right from your mobile device. And I wanted to show what this looks like uh, responsively on mobile because I thought that was kind of cool. So uh, you can see here, if we click the search button, we kind of dim the rest of the screen and we provide the search box. We have access to the whole left-hand menu here uh, from the hamburger menu. And we can swipe left and right. And you'll notice if we jump in here to one of these categories, uh, in this case laptops, we're also bringing in some relevant knowledge articles. And if we go up one to the order hardware uh, category, you'll notice we now bring these in as subcategories so you can filter your results. So again, service catalog can be structured in, you know, probably a thousand different ways, but uh, this was just a quick example that we used during our demo uh, at Knowledge. But anyway, thanks so much for uh, attending our session and for watching this video. If you have any questions, you know, feel free to post in the comments and thanks again.